Hi, I'm Madison from Riding Warehouse, and today we're going to discuss the different types of bridles, nosebands, and the horses and disciplines they're best suited for. We're going to begin with our bridle types. There are three to four main types, the snaffle bridle, the anatomical snaffle bridle, the double bridle, and the bitless bridle. The traditional snaffle bridle is the most commonly used bridle across all the English disciplines. They come in a variety of styles and colors to suit those individual disciplines. Snaffle bridles can have a variety of noseband types, which we will go over later in this video. The change in noseband type does not alter the bridle's classification as a snaffle bridle. Snaffle bridles are compatible with almost every type of bit. The term snaffle refers to the use of a single bit. Next, we have the double or full bridle. This is due to the use of two individual bits and sets of reins. The top bit is a snaffle bit with smaller rings and a thinner mouthpiece. The bottom is a non-jointed waymouth bit with a curb chain that is used for leverage. Bit converters and flash attachments are never to be used with double bridles. These bridles are typically only used in upper level dressage and in saddle seat. While they are technically allowed in the other disciplines, they are rarely seen or encouraged due to the strong pressure they can apply. They should only be used by experienced hands. The idea behind the double bridle is to allow the rider to become lighter and softer in their aids for a more refined type of communication. They should only be used on horses with a high degree of training as an aid in advanced movements. They should not be used as a tool to increase control or stopping power. Moving on to anatomic or ergonomic bridles. While these are still technically going to be a snaffle or a double bridle, their unique shaping makes them slightly different. Anatomic or ergonomic bridles are designed with unique shaping and placement to help maximize comfort for your horse. Brands perform individual research in hopes of creating designs that will suit a multitude of horse shapes. The idea is to avoid pressure points, sensitive nerve endings, and maximize air intake. If you try an anatomical bridle and your horse doesn't like it, that doesn't mean that one by another brand wouldn't give your horse the comfort they need. One thing to note when choosing your anatomical bridle is to always check your rule book for your chosen discipline. Not every anatomic or ergonomic bridle is legal in every discipline. Last of our bridles is the bitless bridle. These bridles use nose pressure in the place of a bit. Multiple brands are releasing multi-way bridles that have the capability to be properly used with or without a bit. Currently, bitless bridles are only allowed in show jumping or in the show jumping phases of eventing. This makes the multi-bridle a great option for riders that want to have capability to both use a bit or go bitless. Once you know what class of bridle you're looking for, there's some key details you should know before making your final selection. The leather and hardware colors should match or coordinate with your saddle for the best show turnout. While most disciplines don't have an official rule on matching colors, it's one of those unspoken rules that can hurt you in the long run. Mostly riders have to decide on whether their bit and ring closures are going to be exposed buckles, like the bridle here, or hook and stud closures underneath, like the bridle here. A lot of disciplines prefer the hook and stud closures due to the clean look and the lack of shine around the horse's mouth. Buckle closures can be favored for schooling or for eventers where swapping bits quickly can be helpful. While there are many parts to the bridle, the noseband is probably the most important piece. The type of noseband you choose is going to alter the pressure points that should support your horse and increase their comfort. The plain cavison is most commonly used in hunter jumper and is always used on a double bridle. They apply the least amount of pressure and are just a simple circle. These can also be seen with a crank or adjustable noseband, which references this movable piece here. This allows the noseband to follow the horse's head shape and evenly distribute pressure without interference of the cheekbones. Riders should be mindful that due to the conforming shape, these can be easily over tightened and cause discomfort for your horse if not fitted correctly. Both traditional and crank nosebands can be seen with or without the flash attachment. The flash attachment helps increase bit stability, helps prevent the horse from putting their tongue over the bit or crossing their jaw, especially in the learning stages. These are most commonly used in dressage while horses are moving up the levels and learning new skills. However, a flash attachment cannot be used on a double bridle. Next we have the drop noseband and the figure eight noseband. The drop noseband uses a single loop that sits below the bit. This is used to stabilize the bit in the horse's mouth primarily used for young horses or super sensitive types that don't like a lot of movement in the bit. It operates similarly to the flash attachment, but due to its configuration, it can provide even more stability than just a flash. The figure eight noseband operates similar to a regular noseband with flash, while avoiding pressing the cheek into their teeth and allowing for maximum expansion of the airways. The figure eight is most popular in show jumping and cross country phases of eventing due to the increased air intake. 
There are so many bridles to choose from, and trying to find what is right for your horse can be a daunting task. When in doubt, always consult your trainer to find what is most suitable for your horse. With so many options available, we're confident you can find your perfect bridle with us. Check out our wide selection at ridingwarehouse.com.